so we know already how is the differentiator this is the differentiator right so for practical differentiator we need to add few more devices so here what i had done was just i add one more input resistor and here i have added one more feedback capacitor this is called a practical integrator circuit sorry practical differentiator circuit so here uh, you can see v out is equal to minus r of c times dv in by dt so this is the equation we have found this is the equation number 2 this is the final equation we derived for this uh, simple differentiator or the normal differentiator so now i write the output value in terms of impedance so in this case i just write the same equation differently v out is equal to minus rf divided by xc xc is the reactance reactance of the capacitor so please remember this reactance uh, this xc that is always corresponds to this capacitor or whatever the capacitor we have the reactance value so react uh, rf divided by xc times v in so now i am not having any differentiation and this xc we have a formula xc is equal to 1 divided uh, 1 divided by 2 pi fc so this is the equation 2 pi f c c is the capacitor value p is the, uh, sorry f is the frequency value um so if we rewrite this equation now what will happen v out divided by v in is equal to minus rf so here we already know his uh, v out is equal to minus r of by xc right xc is this one so let me just uh, write minus rf divided by xc xc value is 1 divided by 2 pi fc so this 2 pi fc this term completely going up and this one is uh, no use so we can just remove that then we call the equation as like this so v out divided by v in that is here is equal to minus rf times 2 pi fc so you can see here so and v out by v in is what that is the gain we know that v out by v in is equal to gain or this is also called transfer function so just to remember that so now we get the gain value like this minus 2 pi fc times rf so now you can see the gain value is directly proportional to these things these uh, different component values so if you increase this rf value then you can increase this output value if you increase this input frequency value then you can also increase the output value if you increase the capacitor value then also you can increase the output value so because all these all are uh, directly proportional remember we cannot increase the gain indefinitely so infinitely you cannot increase the gain uh, by increasing the input signal frequency it's limited by the open loop gain of the operational amplifier it's always true in all the circuits the maximum gain you can achieve is that the intersection point of the differentiator curve and the open loop gain so here for example uh, this is the differentiator curve we have and we are just using this 0 db line we are drawing here this one is crossing in uh, two points so this curve and this 0 db line is crossing at two points so these are two frequency levels then if you just take it down if this x axis is with respect to frequency and here of course we are having everything is in terms of gain in db decibel so then we call this is a first uh, frequency that is the lower cut off frequency and this is the second cut off frequency that is the higher cut off frequency or upper cut off frequency um we do not have any problems here uh, from the input offset voltage or input offset current you remember i told you in the previous integrator we have the offset voltage and we have some problems here we do not have that that is the property or characteristic 
of this differentiator. Um, so now, in a simple differentiator circuit, as I mentioned, if we increase the input frequency level, the gain of the differentiator circuit will also increase. If the gain of the uh, of a differentiator is increasing means output will also increase. And the input impedance will be reduced. So remember, when you increase the frequency, output is increasing. Not only the output is increasing, at the same time, the input impedance is also decreasing. You see? Uh, so input impedance means what? Uh, then you have to uh, recall your memory from last week lecture. I showed about ideal characteristics of operational amplifier. Remember the input impedance here the, in the equivalent circuit, and this is the output impedance here. So always output impedance is equal to zero and input impedance is equal to infinity. It means for a practical operational amplifier, it's not like that. Infinity means maybe we have in terms of some mega ohms. Zero means it's not zero, it's in terms of maybe some ohms. So, in the operational amplifier, when you operate this operational amplifier, you cannot really affect this input resistance or input impedance that will affect the entire operation. So, but here you can see by increasing the input signal frequency, you are reducing this input impedance. That's not okay. That is why we are adding these extra, extra or additional devices together with this one. So that uh, to avoid this problem, so by other words, we can say that this differentiator circuit is very sensitive about the high frequency noise. If we have this high frequency noises in this uh, input signal here, this noise signal will also get amplified at the output. So we are amplifying this uh, input to the output, right? So if you have noises, then the noise will also get, uh, if the noise is very small here, noise will also get amplified. Then you will have a problem at the output. You want only pure uh, sinusoidal signal at the output. So we do not really want to have any noise signals when we apply the input. And if there is a no noise signal, then we have to filter it out. We do not want to amplify and bring this out at the output. So these two drawbacks can be eliminated by adding these additional components. Uh, and also, this is also additional component here. So that is called a practical differentiator circuit. So what I have added is I have added R1, R comp, and CF. Yes, that we know that. Uh, we have two RC low pass filters here in this uh, differentiator circuit. If you look at this practical differentiator, then you can see here RC, they are connected in series. And here RC, they are connected in parallel. So we can also call this as RC low pass filter. So <laughs> that's why we have two cutoff frequencies. I told you here, we have two cutoff frequencies. This is the lower cutoff frequency and this is upper cutoff frequency or higher cutoff frequency, H. So we know the formula for cutoff frequency. So here we have one LPF, low pass filter, and here we have another LPF. So the lower cutoff frequency, I can say FL is equal to one divided by two pi R1 C1. This is the cutoff frequency one. Uh, oh, what is going on? Yeah. And here we have another cutoff frequency that is the F high FH uh, is equal to one divided by two pi RF CF. So that is why you have two cutoff frequencies here. We will see one problem with the uh, numerical numbers, though you will have some idea. So this is the circuit of practical differentiator. The question is, what are the two cutoff frequencies? That is the useful range of the differentiation of the following differentiator circuit. So now uh, remember one more thing here, input signal frequency should be less than lowest cutoff frequency. So we have, for example, now let's say we have the lower, oof. 
lower cut off frequency and we have the higher cut off frequency so we can call this as a f1 instead of l and h we can call this as a f2 so we are applying the input signal so based on this one i can calculate this f1 value and f2 value right this is the cut off frequency one and then this is the cut off frequency this is c cut off frequency two so uh, i can apply the formula i can use the formula and apply these values and find the f1 and i can i can use the formula and apply these values and find the f2 so i apply this input signal so this input signal has a frequency so it must be less than f1 so for example uh, f in should be f1 divided by 10 but in the integrator it should be 10 times multiplied here you can see 10 times divided so for example if that uh, this cf1 the first cut off frequency is 100 kilohertz you can take the same example so what should be the input signal frequency so it should be 10 times less so it means 100 kilohertz divided by 10 so it should be 10 kilohertz Okay, so the input signal frequency, if you apply 10 kilohertz, then you will get the perfect differentiation. But if you apply more higher values, then of course the differentiation will not be uh, so perfect. This is the differentiator, but the same thing what we had seen in the integrator was 100 multiplied by 10. So just to go back and you will see that. So this is a 1000 kilohertz we asked. To get the perfect integration, we need to apply 10 times larger than the cutoff frequency. Here, uh, 10 times smaller than the lower cutoff frequency. Okay, so now uh, this is the F1 value, and F1 is uh, here is the F2 value. So that is the F2 is uh, the same formula, and you apply this uh, 100 picofarad and 5 kilo ohm. That is the feedback resistor and feedback capacitor, then you will get this uh, frequency value. And if you apply these values, 100 ohms, remember this is 5 kilo ohm, this is 100 ohms and 10 nanofarad in this formula, then you will get the F1 as 159.2 kilohertz. So now you know F1 value, now you know F2 value. So, uh, then you can easily uh, calculate uh, what should be your input signal frequency. The F1 value is 159.2. So 159.2 divided by 10 according to this uh, theory. So then the input signal frequency can be 15.9 kilohertz in order to achieve perfect differentiation. So don't get confusion you are finding frequency first frequency and your uh, first cutoff frequency and you are finding second cutoff frequency and then whatever the value you achieve so you are just dividing by 10 that is the input value you can apply so this is just for some practical tips to design this kind of differentiator circuit 